so welcome back to my channel today we are going to be discussing anatomy of the brain demonstration and so this is the lateral part of the brain and so we are seeing the lobes of the brain so this is the frontal lobe the temporal lobe the occipital lobe and the parietal lobe so here the labels are on the frontal and the parietal areas so the label one shows us the lateral sulcus or the sylvian fissure which divides the temporal lobe from the frontal and the parietal then you have the label 2 shows you the central sulcus the central sulcus divides the frontal and the parietal lobe and then the label 3 shows us the post central gyrus so the gyrus behind the central sulcus and so this represents the posterior bank of the central sulcus this area here also known as the sensory strip it's the primary somatosensory area and so this area is usually known as Broadman 1 and then you have the pre-central gyrus here labeled 4 and so this is the anterior bank of the central sulcus and so it forms the primary motor area or Broadman area 4 then here you have the middle frontal gyrus and specifically this is the frontal eye field area or Broadman 8 and then you have the prefrontal cortex so this is the cognitive area or Broadman area 10 and then here you have the triangular part of the inferior frontal gyrus also known as the pass triangular so if you look at its shape it's look, it looks triangular and so this is Broadman area 45 which is part of the motor speech area or Broadman uh, 45 also known as Broca's area. Now, we have the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, this part, number one, and this is area 46. So it's part of the cognitive centers of the brain. And then this is now the pass orbitale, which is area 47, and it's not considered to be part of Broca's area. And then here you have the temporal polar area or area 38, and this is the area that allows you to comprehend humor. Then you have Broadman area 21. This is the middle temporal gyrus. So this is a superior temporal gyrus. This is the middle temporal gyrus. Then you have the inferior temporal gyrus or area 20. Here, what you have is the superior parietal lobule or the association cortex, also known as Broadman area 5. And then you have your supramarginal gyrus or Wanaki's area. And so this represents area 39 and 40. And then this is your angular gyrus or area 39, responsible for arithmetic function. And then you have area 43, which is the gastritory cortex. So this is the parietal operculum. So this is the parietal operculum. When you go to the base of the brain, so what you see here is the lateral orbital sulcus and then here you have the medial orbital sulcus and so this becomes the medial orbital gyrus okay and so this represents the temporal lobe so the temporal pole of the temporal lobe and then you have your lateral occipital temporal sulcus so this number five is the lateral occipital temporal sulcus and then this is the entorhinal cortex. And then you have the lateral occipitotemporal gyrus being labeled 7. So this is the straight gyrus or the gyrus recti. And then you have the olfactory sulcus which houses the olfactory tract. So this is the olfactory tract which is paired right and left. And then you have the ancus. So this is the ancus. And you can note the close relationship of the ancus to the interpeduncular fossa. So the midbrain is here. So the ancus, when it herniates, it usually compresses on the midbrain, sometimes forming what you call the Canohan's notch. And then you have the rhinal sulcus being labeled 11. So this is the rhinal sulcus. And then you have the fusiform gyrus. So number 12, this is the fusiform gyrus, which is responsible for face recognition. And then you have the lateral occipital temporal gyrus here. 
So when you go to the pons and the cerebellum, this is an axial section, so it has been cut on the transverse plane. And so this is the pons, this is the cerebellum behind. So this is the anterior part, this is the posterior part. And so you can notice that these will be the superior cerebellar peduncle, so labeled one. So this is what connects the pons and the cerebellum. And here you can actually see the decussation of the superior cerebellar uh, peduncles at that level. And then this is the vermis of the cerebellum. And then here is the primary fissure of the cerebellum. So if you look at this is the fourth ventricle. And so you can appreciate the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle there. And then here you can see gray matter within this white matter and so this is the fastigial nucleus and then this is the posterior lateral fissure remember we labeled this as the anterior okay or the primary fissure so this now becomes the posterior or the posterior lateral fissure so if you look at the cerebellar vermis it has multiple parts so if you start from the fourth ventricle so this first part here is the lingula and then this is the central lobule and then here what you have is the culmen then you have the decliver at that point the nodule then you have the uvula and then you have the pyramids there then you are going to have the tuber so this will still be the superior cerebellar uh, peduncles which connect the midbrain to the cerebellum and its decussation is at that point okay so you have the <coughs> cerebellar vermis and the pons at this point and this is a sagittal section so it has been cut in the sagittal plane so this is still the vermis so these are parts of the vermis and so you can appreciate this part labeled one is our central lobule and then you can appreciate the superior cerebellar system this, this is the inferior collicular so below it you have the superior cerebellar system which houses cerebrospinal fluid and then this part level 3 is the lingula of the cerebellum. Then this is the primary fissure. And then you have the fourth ventricle. And then you have the nodulus of the vermis of the cerebellum. Then you have the post-secondary fissure or the pre-nodular fissure. Okay. So it basically separates uh, the nodulus from the ovula okay so you have the oval of the vermis at that point and then here you have the pyramid of the vermis then you have the pontomedullary junction here so this is the pons this is the uh, medulla and so this is the pontomedullary junction so this is the midbrain and you remember we had talked about the superior uh, cerebellar peduncles connecting the midbrain to the cerebellum and so those fibers pass above like this okay now the part labeled 11 these white fibers here these are our corticospinal tracts that will come to the pyramids so this part labeled 12 is a superior medullary velum okay and the part labeled 13 is the medial longitudinal fasciculus then part labeled 14 this is the area of the decussation of the motor system so the corticospinal tract decussation and then this is the medulla oblongata so basically the pyramids of the medulla oblongata and then the part level 16 is the reticular formation this gray matter here this is part of the reticular formation then this is the inferior colliculus remember this is the superior cerebellar system and then you have the decliver at that point you have the folium at that point and then you are going to have the horizontal fissure at that point. And then this is the tuber of the vermis of the cerebellum. So if you look at another axial section, you see the pons there. You see the cerebellum. See this is the vermis of the cerebellum. So these white fibers here are the pons. These are the transverse pontine fibers. Then this part level 2 now this become the middle cerebellar peduncle what connects the pons to the cerebellum 
and then this is your fourth ventricle and then you're going to have the lingula of the cerebellum there so this whole thing is the vermis okay so this is the prelunate sulcus and then you're going to have the sorry this is the post lunate sulcus this is the prelunate sulcus then you're going to have this part level 8 as your superior medullary velum and then you have the part level 9 being your primary fissure and then this is the nuclear layer okay so this is basically part of the fourth ventricle and then this is the decussation that had occurred for the superior cerebellar peduncle so thank you if there are any questions you can leave them on the comment section below